let's move on. Okay, next on the agenda is the NBA. All right, a big, uh, a big, uh, a big NBA card tonight. There are uh, a couple of plays that I am liking. Let's start out with one that I bet on the overnight line, and this is a perfect example of what I uh, of what I was talking about doing the show at twelve o'clock. If the market moves against you, you can take a better line, but that means that you're going against the market movement. If the market moves in your favor. That's great, but it also means that you have to take a worse line than you could have taken at 10 o'clock. And right now, the play that I think I'm going to give is the under in Cleveland, Detroit. In the morning at 10 o'clock, I would have gotten 215. Now it's up to 216 or 216 and a half. So obviously some money coming in on the over, which doesn't mean it's going to close there. It might go back down. But I'm thinking that the under is a good play here. You know, Cleveland is, uh, is, is not that fast of a team in general. Detroit playing on a back-to-back, -back, and it's kind of a high total. And uh, they did play once recently, and it was a, it was a modest scoring game. I'm thinking the under might be a good play there. What do you think, Jim? I don't mind the under. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very in, I capped the hell out of this game. Uh, before I do hammer it, though, I'd like to give a shout out for my man Fernando Diaz. Wants us to give a shout out to the Portuguese fans okay. that we have, and we love oh. you guys. And thank you so much for watching. I would love to move to Portugal and be a citizen there, man. I saw I saw a couple of videos on 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 the uh, the seafood that they make there, and of course the chicks are ridiculous. But anyway, let's move on. Shout out to Portugal. If you can hook me up with a Portuguese chick and Portuguese citizenship, I would really appreciate that. If you can. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, what do you think about Cleveland Detroit under Jimmy the Bag? Well, I don't trust this Cavaliers team with Dwayne Wade playing 37 minutes a game at the point. It just, right. it's, it's not right. sustainable. We talk about our numbers being unsustainable. Them winning mm -hmm. with that, with Dwayne Wade playing 37 minutes is unsustainable. So with Rose injured, Wade stepped up in a big way. Now with Shumpert out too? Yes. This is too much. We're asking for too much from Dwayne Wade. And uh, I like the Pistons here and will be taking them. Really? Uh, they're okay. on the second half of a back-to-back -back after beating the Wolves last night in Minnesota. That was a big game. But Reggie Jackson is turning into the fourth quarter assassin that this team needed to win these games. They didn't have the right closers. They never had the right closers. And if Reggie Jackson's going to step up, they're going to be tough to beat. If he's an elite scorer in crunch time, they are going to be tough to beat. Okay, so you're going to take uh, Detroit plus the plus the points, or you want the money line? What I do you want? I want the uh, money line. The money line for Detroit, which will be a slight positive line here. Best line line shopping here at SBR odds will be plus 115 at uh, Pinnacle and uh, and a few other places. So you're on Detroit plus 115, and I am going to take the under at 216 and a half minus 113. We'll see where this closes. Maybe it'll close at 218. Maybe it'll close back down at 215. But I'm going to take the under right now. 216 and a half. Obviously, the market movement from the morning uh, is going against me but we'll see where it closes. I'm on the under 216 and a half minus 116. Jim is on Detroit money line plus 115. All right. I'm also thinking about, uh, yeah, a few other plays. All right. So now let's talk about the next game that uh, is a very, very interesting game. And, um, and this is why it's so important to do these, uh, uh, why you get more information uh, at this time of the day, because I'm going to talk about the, the Knicks and the Clippers, right? Now, the Clippers, of course, have been terrible. Uh, ATS recently just can't get anything done. I know they're supposed to get Patrick Beverly back, which is nice. Uh, the Knicks, look, I've been doing well in NBA, and we will throw up the record in a second, but I've been doing well in NBA. Had a loser on Friday with the Knicks uh, at... Uh, at, at Toronto, but the Knicks still seem like a pretty solid team. Why should they be a, a favorite, which is where a small favorite of minus one and a half, which is where they open, and now a strong move in favor of the Clippers? The Clippers are now a one or one and a half point favorite. Knicks are an underdog. I don't get this, Jimmy the Bag. What do you think? I think the problem is the secondary scoring options for the Knicks. Mm -hmm. Hardaway Jr. and Cantor, if they're your second and third scoring options, you're just in, be in deep trouble. Patrick Beverly will give the Clippers some hope. They've been getting nothing from the one, and I know that Patrick can play the two as well, but... I, I, you know, this is a tricky, tricky spot. Yeah. Porzingis shooting 34% in his last three games, went three for 13 against the Raptors. He's not going to continue that. It's a tough, it's a tough, very tough spot to figure out what Beverly is going to give this Clippers team if he can play 25 minutes. Because if he can only play 15 minutes, then having him back is not that big of a deal. Uh, it's a very tough game to figure out, and the line's been bouncing all over the place. Has it been bouncing? It seems to me it's been just going in the Clippers' favor. Well, yes, but I mean, at first... I understood. I thought I understood why the Knicks were favored. All right. And then that just kind of has been slipping and slipping every hour. All right. Let's go to some comments. Uh, okay. Here we go. Game R State of Mind says Clippers a money line lock all in caps. Okay. Justin Searcy says leave this game alone all in caps. Sal Negro says, uh, says, says, uh, Sal Nigro says, uh, Knicks 0 and 10 straight up last 10 against the Clippers. Okay. But how many games do they have Porzingis for that one? Baseball Bob says Knicks bounce back at home. Gamer State of Mind says fade Knicks. 
NBA Alert says you guys sleeping on Clippers. Hmm. Alonzo has Nick's first half and yes. full game. Well, I was thinking about first half, maybe not full game. Uh, Gamer State of Mind says clipping, getting action. Baseball Bob says love Knicks at home. Look, I just cannot, uh, I cannot uh, understand why the Clippers are getting uh, all this money here. But obviously, that is a, that is a strong market opinion right there. Richard Dooley says Knicks first half. Reggie says Knicks come to play, and Reggie's the guy who endorsed my uh, my over on the Spurs game on Friday, which uh, we were both right on. Uh, Reggie says Knicks come to play. You know what I'm going to do? All right, I'm going to take the Knicks, but just on the first half. I think that there might be something here that uh, that uh, that the Clippers will will will, will yeah will will pull, ramp it up in the second half. But I will take the uh, the Knicks first half, and the best line will be pick them at plus 101 at Pinnacle. So I'm going to take the Knicks first half, pick them plus 101. Knicks first half, pick them plus 101. What do you think about that, Jim? I'm c- very concerned about this basketball game, and don't have don't I feel like I don't really have a strong handle on what's going to happen out there yeah the clippers you know have lost eight straight games 10 of 11 how much is beverly going to mean to them and how much is he going to play um Mm. it's a it's a very tricky spot and i'm going to leave the game alone bradley oliver says did you see the knicks last game yeah it was bad it was bad and the one concern i do have is that maybe poor zingas's elbow is hurting him more than he's letting on and I freaking, from a betting perspective, I understand that the guys are tough guys and everything. You're like, oh, I'm not hurt. But from a betting perspective, you got to tell us, Porzingis, is your elbow hurting or not? You know what I mean? Yeah, we've dealt with it um, with Kyle Lowry in Toronto when he mm-hmm. has had an elbow bursitis, and we don't know how much it's bothering him. Because they're always saying, no, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. No, I'm fine. All right, I get it. I get it. You're a tough guy. But just from a gambling perspective, let us know the truth. All right, uh, <laughs> Sal Nigro says, uh, stay away, Knicks Clippers. It's a dog game. All right, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Knicks first half. I might eat a loss on on that one. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, yeah. Bradley Oliver says they look so bad versus the Raptors. I know, I know. Uh, okay, uh, Jose Jen Rodri- uh, John Rodriguez says Knicks are a second half team, more so fourth quarter team. I don't know about the first half, Pete. It's a coin toss. All right. Well, if it's if it's literally a coin toss, they have a teeny teeny edge taking it at plus one hundred one, don't I? You do. All right. Let, uh, Luis Fernando Esquinza says Knicks first quarter money line is a value. Yeah, that was my other note. My other note was just take the Knicks on the first quarter. Yeah, you might be right here, and I might add that one on. Uh, okay. Uh, let's 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 move on. Nick, uh, sorry, uh, Jim. What else do you want to uh, add from the entire card here? I am going to take the Hornets at mm-hmm. home against mm. the Timberwolves. I know that the Wolves had a bad game yes last night, and they're on the second half of a back-to-back and should step up. They won by 18 in their first meeting. Jeff Teague outplayed Kemba Walker in that matchup. He, uh, Teague went for 18 and 12. Walker was held to nine points. Since that game, he scored at least 20 points in every game. He's now hit 11 of his past 17 threes. They're a better team with Jeremy Lamb coming off the bench. Uh, but he did... Uh, Fuck his hamstring up, so he is uh, he is questionable. But uh, that's helped their team, getting him out of the starting lineup. I think that this Hornets team is coming into their own at home. They have the bigs to handle Carl Anthony Towns, and that is key. And the last time we said who had the bigs to handle um, Davis and um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cousins in, in New Orleans, we were, we were picking a team that had four bigs ready to go in the Nuggets. Now they've lost Millsap to an injury, but when you when you have enough bigs, you can you can neutralize yeah. to the best of your ability some of these dominant yeah. players in the league and I think the Hornets can do that tonight. Yeah, my, my, my notes on this one were lean Charlotte lean under and uh, maybe I will what do you think about the under? Minnesota's obviously been playing uh, they're like four under, unders in a row and playing better defense and all that. What do you think, Jim? I do like the under. Uh, what mm-hmm. are we at? What is well, that it's 214 right or 214 and a half has not moved since uh, since uh, since the opening line. Alright, so you're going to take uh, you're going to take Charlotte, huh? I'm going to take Charlotte. Okay, so that's Charlotte minus two, minus 104 is the uh, current best line at Pinnacle. And uh, just quickly, what do you think about the uh, what do you think about the uh, the, the the total, the under? Do you think that uh, Charlotte's going to ramp it up offensively? They have been, they can. but yes. I, I think you're right. I think that the Timberwolves are focusing more on their defense. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think it's a very interesting spot. I'm uh, very very curious. Um, about taking it as well. Are you making it a pick? I am making an official pick under. It's 214 or 214 and a half. Bookmaker and you wager have a 214 and a half minus 110. And I will throw that one on there. Uh, Minnesota Charlotte under 214 and a half minus 110. Uh, Jimmy has a Charlotte minus two minus 104, which I do agree with. Uh, I might make that one an official pick. Two picks that I'm thinking about making official before this segment is over will be Charlotte and the Knicks on the first quarter. Even though that would be doubling up, I just feel like it's a bounce back spot for the Knicks and even and getting Beverly back for Clippers although the market likes the Clippers. 
commenters in the uh, in the uh, chat box like the Clippers. All right, uh, Jim, do you want to do you want to just stick with that or or, or the under? We got. I'm going to stick with it right now, but I'm going to think about the under as well. And we also have an, an extra chance with our five o'clock. Six That's o'clock right. Eastern I totally show forgot about that. To, to, That's right. So we can go study these more and more, and then come I totally back and forgot. Yeah, that. we can come back in and and add picks or take away picks. Now, if we take away picks, we can't just eliminate them. You have to bet the other side. In which case, you might risk getting middled unless it goes in your favor. In which case, you could get a middle. So uh, you're right. I totally forgot about that Jim thanks for uh, thanks for reminding me about that all right let's see uh, a whole bunch of other games what else do you want to add on here Jim I'm going to take the over in the Blazers Grizzlies game mm. now I know I've been burnt taking the over mm. on the Blazers and I've hit with the under on mm-hmm. the Blazers I know this is the case but the issue now is that Mike Conley is down with an Achilles injury and Chalmers is not very good defensively at the point I think that the Blazers are going to have a lot of opportunities. The Grizzlies have allowed 100 or more points in eight of their last nine games. Lillard has had 22 over 22 points in each of his last three games, and he's going to destroy Chalmers. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know the Blazers are second in defense and fifth in rebounds, but this Grizz team is 28th in rebounding. Mm -hmm. How did this happen? I don't understand how this happened to this Grizzlies team, and because of it, I think there's going to be points scored, and I like this line. Well, it is all over the place. 195, 195 and a half, 196, and 196 and a half are all currently widely available. Using SBR odds, line shopping is key when the market is uncertain right now. The book that has 195 is Bookmaker, so we can give you the over 195 minus 110. If you wanted the under, you could go to uh, five dimes, a couple other places, and get 196 and a half. Very nice there. Line shopping at SBRodds.com. Jim, you're going to take the over 195 at 110 in Portland and and Port- Portland. In Memphis. And we do have a note from our man Walter Trotter. He says uh, Tim Hardaway isn't going to play. For the Knicks. I know. Yeah, I know. Completely. I know. I thought I know. he was. Uh, he hurt his foot in his last game. I mean, jeez, uh, uh, I don't know. Wow. Wow. Ron Fig says, I keep spreading the word about these guys. Hopefully, you can get a thousand in here soon. SBR has the best sports betting info and entertainment anywhere, and they don't try to sell. Oh, my God. Ron Fink. All right, here's what we're going to make. A, I want to get a graphic where we can put up a graphic that says, quote, or comment of the day or comment of the hour. That's what I'm talking about. Ron Fig, we love you. I live for those kinds of comments. There's a there's a, there's a, a, a floor for my uh, overall depression when I have comments like that. I can't get below a certain level. Thank you so much, Ron Fig. Really, really appreciate it. Ron Fig, thank you so much. All right, getting back to I'm sorry, when I see a comment like that, I just have to cut things off because I get so excited. You Man, know what I mean? I love it. I have to keep it honest. If I see a line I love, I have to get, uh, get exci- uh, you know, uh, jump on it and get excited. If I see a comment I love. All right, so you're going to take Memphis over 195 minus 110? Yes. All right. Next game that I want to... Tell me what you think about this one, Jim. Uh, You kind of uh, read Indiana and Orlando kind of well. Uh, Here's another one. I know that Indiana's playing a uh, higher-paced game recently, uh, but I think that... uh, I I, I bet the under on this one, again, I bet it in the morning uh, line, and it was 219. Now it's up to 220 or 220 and a half at uh, at a few places. So the market has uh, bet this line up a little bit. Again, we'll see where it closes, but I'm thinking about the under. I know Indiana's off a very... uh, A game where it went way over and they played very well with that style uh but orlando needs a win here and anytime a team needs a win part of that has to be predicated on 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 being focused and playing good defense and i'm thinking the under might be a good play what do you think i think the under might be a good play as well a sneaky good play Uh, so the magic are eight and eight their first eight games they average 114.9 points a game they shoot 48.9 percent from the field 44.2 percent from three in their last eight they're averaging 99.6 points a game 15 points less. They're hitting 34% from three now. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they're, that is what we expected. Not not that badly, but we didn't believe the way they were playing in their first eight games of the year. And we, talk about, we talked about it often. Now, the Pacers have stepped it up again. Right when we thought maybe they were going to settle into being a bad team, they've won four or five. They're playing very good basketball. In their past six quarters, they've outscored their opponents 180 to 137, hitting 56% from three. They've won their last six trips to Orlando, won 11 of the last 12 meetings with the Magic. And yeah. then the Magic are decent-sized favorites. Yes. I mean, it's obviously a spot where uh, I, I don't want to take the Magic as a favorite here, but that's the way I would be leaning. It's a spot where they need to come in and uh, and play well. Uh, but I'm leaning under, and I will take this one. And uh, this is another th- good thing that, that where, where line shopping comes into play. It's 219 and a half, 220, or 220 and a half. But one of the 219 and a halves is at betonlinesportsbetting.ag. It's 219 and a half plus 110. And so I think there is a lot of volatility, volatility involved with the, uh, with the uh, total here. It's either going to soar over or soar under. I will take that one. I won't 
won't take the 220 and a half. I'll take under 219 and a half plus 110 currently at betonlinesportsbetting.ag. I'll make that one another official pick, uh, Indiana and Orlando on the under. Jim, what do you think about that? I think it's a good play. I, I just... I don't know what we're going to get from this Magic team. Right. It's not the first and it's not the second. Right. If it's even close to what they've been doing and if they can defend the three better, then I think you're in great shape. Yes. I, and I, I think like, for this game, they will. I like where you're at. Game. It makes sense to All me. All right, I'm taking the under. Uh, sp- talking about teams that uh, that uh, that are playing great defense and questionable offense, Boston against Dallas. This is another one. It opened at 196.5 as far as the total is concerned. Uh, it has underwritten all over it. Uh, I bet it a little bit, and now it's up to 198. Uh, why would the market bet this one up? Obviously, Dallas questionable on offense. Boston great on defense and uh, and shutting teams down that can be shut down. What's your take on Boston Dallas? Also, obviously, Boston has been rolling both straight up and ATS, and this line also has moved in Dallas's favor. It was a seven and a half on the morning line, and now it's down to six and a half market wide. Five times even has six. So this is a perfect example of how doing these uh, these shows at this time at twelve o'clock, you have to you know look at the line movements, and it makes you scratch your head a little bit, right? A line move to the over when the obvious play would be under, and a line movement towards Dallas when Boston would seem to be the obvious square play, right? Yeah, uh, it's it's an interesting spot. Now, I think, and I've said this already this year, and it hasn't worked out, but I think the Mavericks are going to give us value at home mm-hmm. this season, and they haven't been. Mm-hmm. Um, now, with the Celtics, I don't feel comfortable to, against with them covering any big spreads against bad teams because they seem to do just enough to win, and they're they're closing out games exceptionally well. Mm-hmm. That one-two game with Horford is outstanding with Irving and Horford. But the Mavs just hit a franchise tying 19 threes in their win over the Bucks, De- and they destroyed them. And Dennis Smith Jr. and Harrison Barnes are looking really good. Um, this is a tricky spot. I mean, I, I think. I just don't see the Celtics beating teams by 15 points. Mm-hmm. I don't, and we haven't seen that, that happening at all. Are they the kind of team like New Orleans that lets down a little bit when they uh, when they play teams that are uh, that, that that they overmatch? They will be once this winning streak is over. Mm-hmm. But this winning streak means a lot to them. Well, here we go. Comments, comments, comments. Uh, Roll Dice says take Dallas and the points. NBA Alert says Dallas will win because of Dirk and Dennis. Art Mead says over. Dallas Mavericks, Dallas and Boston have played over last seven games at home. But that was when Dallas was, was a better team offensively and Boston wasn't quite as good a team uh, defensively. Uh, Roll Dice says Celtics got to lose. Uh, Devin Turcott says Dallas and Boston with another questionable line. Vish new ace says Mavs win tonight roll dice Dallas wow so in general the uh, the comments seem to be leaning towards uh, Dallas Jansen Bonzone says Boston should be the play which doesn't mean that he's definitely on it it means that it should be the play which yes it does appear to be yes does appear to be uh I don't know. Uh, Sosana says Tony Brothers refing Portland Memphis game watch out under 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 uh oh the refs do matter they do. In, in, in the NBA, and especially uh, you know some some of these some of these crooked refs, right? Tony Brothers refing for Portland Memphis game, very very good point. So Sana, very good point. Not necessarily uh, saying that you should be off of it, but it, it is worth a uh, worth a um, taking oh, note of. Yeah. DC Coleman says Dallas. Everyone's like in Dallas. DC Coleman says Dallas. Uh, Adam Lastman says take Celtics team over. Ah, hmm. Reggie says the slow tempo plays in Mavs' favor. Yes, but that would also uh, play in the unders' favor, and the line's gotten bet over, which is very interesting. Or Art Mead says, or leave the game alone, which, of course, you could do with every game on the entire card every single day of the year. But that's not what we do. We bet these games. Jim, what do you think? Do you want to take a play on this one? Uh, it's, a, it's a very, uh, very difficult spot because um, even when – I thought the Mavs were looking so good two games ago. Mm-hmm. They lost by they lost that fourth quarter by over 20 points at home. I just can't trust them enough, and I know that the Celtics just do what is necessary to win games. Yeah. So I guess I would, you know, I'm not even going to give a lean here. I'm going to stay away from this. Okay, game. I'm going to give a pick. I'm going to look. The market has bet the total up, but I'm going to take the under under 198 minus 104. I might get burned on that one. I'm hoping that all these totals that uh, didn't move in my direction, you know, I get burned on one or two of them, win on two or three of them, come out with a nice half unit, and uh, add the and increase the uh, the record. Should, should we throw up the NBA record just for a second? It is it is positive. Yeah, let's let's, let's see throw it. up the NBA record just so people know uh, the value of our opinions, which again they do not do on any other show. Make these uh, records and make 
make graphics out of them and make them honest. I'm 44 and 30 in the NBA, up 11 and a half units, up 14.3% ROI. Mm -hmm. Jim, you are 51 and 46, up two and a half units, up two and a half percent ROI, which is fine. You're, you're, you obviously do your research, and uh, it's a good sign that you're seeing a small positive record and shaking your head because that is a uh, look. A lot of people would be like, as long I would be, as long as I'm positive. I've said this from the beginning. If at the end of the year I'm up, I'm positive, even just a half unit, done. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Let the haters come. I was positive. Fuck you. I I totally feel you. Except uh, you know, three weeks ago we were both in in incredible spots and you've maintained that incredible spot actually no the last week i was just nine and ten it's just because my record before that i've actually been been treading water in nba actually yeah no i feel that but i mean still looking at your numbers there they're yes. exceptional and uh i uh i'm concerned by a constant over the last what two and a half weeks mm -hmm. uh dropping little by little i'm yeah. uh, i'm concerned all right well let's go over the picks we've given so far and then see if we want to add any others or move on to nhl jim is on the pistons money line plus 115 charlotte minus two minus 104 and the portland memphis over 195. I'm on the Cleveland game under 216 and a half minus 113. I'm on the Knicks first half pick them plus 101. The Charlotte game under 214 and a half. The Orlando game under 219 and a half plus 110. And the Dallas game under 198 minus 104. Jim, is there anything else you want to add from the NBA? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm on. I need to get more information on Embiid. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought he was a lock to play. Now it sounds like it was a questionable thing that he now is is going to play that really makes um me uncomfortable so i'm gonna wait i was going to give the sixers and i'm not going to at this point i'm going to wait for the late show and very thankful yes. that i have that opportunity i'm assuming that he's not playing because right now it's four and a half what yeah. i thought he was not gonna play well the line is right now four and a half down from seven so i think that means he's, he's not out. gonna yeah. play yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. i had the uh sixers on the money line mm. uh this weekend against the warriors and uh mm. it, i although i enjoyed the night very much um it was a, a tough blow when you sit there and think you're a fucking genius and That's then they right. get outscored 63 Jim, 21 and 18 what did minutes. i tell you from the first show that we did here first about half. philly yes first half. you remember it right yeah. remember i said that from it was it had to have been like the first or second freaking show we did where nba was involved and what what did i what did i say i said philly especially when they're like you know an underdog right especially yeah. when they're an underdog going up against a team last year it was that was the case the entire time they would be they would be like a, an eight point underdog they would be up at the half, winning the game at the half, and you'd think, just like what you said, I was in that position many times, and then the other team would come back, and sometimes they would still cover, but it would be like by one point, where sometimes they wouldn't cover. So, uh, but it was still a pretty, but no, but they did cover though. Oh, you had them on the money line. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Did you take them at least on the spread a little bit? Nope, I went for a score. Wow. I, it was Saturday night. Yeah. You know, I wanted, it was my only uh, action non UFC. Oh. So I just wanted a fun night. I wanted to go oh, watch a game. We went to, went to a great bar, a uh, ton man. of fucking drinks, oh. uh, hookers everywhere. That's tough because your hand, you handicapped the game dead on. But that's the key. That's the key. It's not just about handicapping the game dead on. It's about making the right bets and making the right bet sizes. Those are the three components, you know? It's like how people think that hip-hop is all about rap. No, there's five elements of rap, right? Of hip-hop culture, right? It's not just about rap. And with, uh, with, uh, with, with sports betting, it's not just about finding the edges. You have to bet the right way, and you have to bet size appropriately. Mm -hmm. And there's two other elements that I can't even remember. <laughs> you have the line shop. You have the line shop news, SBR odds. And the fifth element is coming to SBR odds and finding a book that offers you what you're looking for in a sports book. The five elements of, uh, of handicapping. All right, so Jim, is there anything else you want to give or shall we move on? Um, I'm good. I'm, the Wizards-Bucks game is um, an interesting spot that I'm staying away from. Uh, you know, I guess the whole issue is John Wall's game time decision. So we have to wait and see mm -hmm. what's up. But uh, but there's a problem in with this Bucks team, and they if they can't they can't play Etudekumpo and uh, Middleton 37 minutes a game. They're going to break down, and their bench is extremely weak with um, Teletovic and Delavadova out. Uh, in the Thunder Pelicans, I'm extremely interested in this game, uh, but I'm afraid to make a move on it. Davis is back now from uh, yeah. his concussion. They allowed 133 and a half points per contest in the last two games. I mean, that's just god awful. Teams are shooting 38.1% from three against them. Are the Thunder going to be able to take advantage of that? How bad have the Thunder looked in fourth quarters this year? I mean, should, this, should New Orleans be an underdog here? I was thinking that New Orleans as a dog might be a great bet. You know, it might be. It uh, might be, especially maybe on the first half. It might be a really good spot, um, a really good spot. 
I uh, I also have some interest in if we're gonna keep because I know we got to mm-hmm. kind of bang through these games pretty quick. I'm also quite interested in the Atlanta Hawks tonight. Mm-hmm. I know the Spurs have won six of their past seven, or sorry, six of their past eight, and they're coming off a big comeback win against the Thunder. And the Spurs have been getting it done all season without uh, Leonard and Parker. Impressive. Uh, but the Hawks are a better team than I thought they were. And uh, Schroeder and Bazemore are playing very well. They're fast. They're, they can play defense and offense. And then Wake alum John Collins is bringing, supplying mm-hmm. big minutes. They're getting Luke Babbitt back and DeAndre Bembry back. Uh, they're much better than their 3-13 and 13 record indicates. I wonder if they can cover tonight. Yeah, I was definitely having a slight lean to the over in that Atlanta-San Antonio game. And in the New Orleans-OKC game, I was leaning under, thinking that New Orleans is going to clamp down defensively. And maybe a shot with uh, New Orleans either on the first half or on the full game. Uh, money lines. I'm going to think about that for a second. And uh, and uh, and that's about it. I think we've covered uh, every game. All right, Jim, do you want to add anything or should we move on to uh, NHL? Yeah, I would like... I would like to add the Atlanta Hawks at mm-hmm. plus nine and a half. Okay. Um, and um, I think that the Spurs are doing like doing what the Celtics are doing. They're doing just enough to beat these teams. Pop doesn't care about blowing these teams out. Mm-hmm. He's going to play the whole bench. I think this is a good spot to get plus nine and a half. Is that what I'm getting? Yes, nine and a half minus 107 at Pinnacle right now. I'm going to take it plus nine and a half at minus 107. I just feel like some of these teams... Some of these quality basketball teams are only doing what it takes to win, and I, and I count the Spurs and the Celtics among two of those teams doing that. And I, I don't want to get too confident. Like I don't, you know, the Spurs are very. You don't like fading the Spurs at home, mm-hmm. but I just think this is a nice spot for the for the Hawks to cover. All right, and I am going to add New Orleans on the first half plus one. What do you think about that? Do you think that's a that's a that's a plus one minus one hundred nine? You think that's a mistake, Jim? I know New Orleans tends to be a a, a better second half team than first half team, but I think on tonight's game, uh, I'm going to take them uh, plus one. What do you think? Jim? I think that's a good play. I think they're going to come out firing. Yeah. And maybe I'll throw them on the first quarter by uh, by the end of uh, by the end of this show or on the uh, six o'clock show. And I'm also leaning under on that one. What do you think about that one? Do you think that one's or do you think that uh, that uh, you know? What, what's your take on OKC as far as their totals are concerned? A high scoring team, a low scoring team. A low scoring right. team. And uh, so I, I think you're. What's the number you're getting on? Well, that? it's two thirteen or two thirteen and a half or two fourteen, which is about where it was uh, on the opening. I think I bet it at two fourteen. Yeah, my concern. Um, my concern is the Pelicans. I mean, 133 and a half points per contest in the last two. I mean, they're just they're not defending the perimeter at all, at all. Yeah. And that's all that that the Thunder are going to be told to do. They're going to be told to exploit the perimeter, and they're going to say get Davis and get Cousins out there. Right. Play play everything around the outside, and um, so that that's my concern. All right, I will take that one, although it makes me nervous. I will take that one for now. I might pull it back. I'm going to take New Orleans under 214, uh, minus 110, and I'm also throwing on the uh, New Orleans first half play, uh, plus one, minus 109. Oh, that maybe should be a, a, a first quarter pick instead, but I will uh, I will uh, maybe throw that one on um, throw that one on a little bit later. All right. I uh, do have one last play. Okay, Sorry, go. I missed let's it. Go, it's though. the That's Nuggets great. at Kings. Uh-huh. I'm taking the under. Mm-hmm. It's the Nuggets on the second half of a back-to-back, just lost 18 to the Lakers. Lakers put up 70 in the first half. They turned the ball over. 21 times they, they looked awful and they can't continue playing that way uh, Millsap is not going to be playing uh, all, um, very likely he will not be in the lineup mm-hmm. uh, which means more Lyles and Plumlee and Fareed which also means a whole lot less offense the Kings have won three straight at home and they've won that by playing well defensively Cauley Stein has stepped up 40 points 19 boards over his last two games Buddy Heald is out Vince Carter's out the Kings shooters are out and not playing well I think this is a um this is an ugly basketball game that will go over. Or sorry, okay. go under. It's All right, 207.5 uh, minus 104 is the uh, best line right now. Okay, so uh, why don't I review the... Uh, why don't you look at some comments very quickly, and I will review all the NBA picks, and then we'll move on to uh, NHL. In the NBA, Jim is on uh, the Pistons' money line, plus 115. Charlotte, minus 2, minus 104. Memphis, over 195. Atlanta, plus 9.5. And, uh, and Denver, Sacramento, under 207.5, minus 104. I'm on the Cavs game, under 216.5. The Knicks, first half pick them plus 101 which probably should have been a first quarter pick the uh, charlotte game under 214 and a half the orlando game under 219 and a half plus 110 dallas game under 198 minus 104 the new orleans game under 214 minus 110 and new orleans on the first half plus one minus 109 which also probably should be a, a first quarter play let's quickly look at some of these uh, interesting points uh, yeah. tw- my man our man walter says uh, ronda will play big minutes tonight pelicans should play decent if he plays big minutes they can defend the perimeter a little bit mm-hmm. um 
Yeah, so uh, Luke says Jim is right on the Pelicans D is, is shit right now. Mm. There's people afraid of, of for your sake for the under there. Uh, yeah. Don't do the under, not the yeah. under low shack first quarter and first half. That should yes. be it. Angel Romero says not the under low shack first quarter and first half. That should be it, buddy. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, okay, look, I, I gave it as a pick. I can maybe pull it on the 6 o'clock Eastern Time show. We'll see where the line moves, and I'll probably add on the first quarter as well. But for now, first half is uh, is the only play that I got. And I've got the under for now. Uh, too good to be true, says Hawks, plus 9.5. He likes that one. Sixers minus 5.5, and, and he likes OKC. Jim is right. Pelicans D is shit right now. I know the Pelicans D is shit right now, but my thought, but I'm, th- I'm, I'm, I'm projecting, I'm predicting that for this game, at least for this one game, that they will try to turn it around defensively. I, I think that that is a possibility. Um, Nick Dial says here, I think the guy should give one pick that is their favorite pick on the card. Fuck all this. I'm going to take a shot shit. Mm-hmm. I, uh, you know, uh, Nick, uh, I don't know how many times we've said I'm going to take a shot uh, on these games. Uh, we believe them and we make them official picks. So, mm-hmm. um, I, you know, I could say worse things about what I All think right. you just All right. A lot about. of people, though, agreeing with your Hawks on a great pick. One of my – too good to be true, says one of my two favorite on the board. Hawks are a great pick. Everyone agreeing with your Hawks pick. Very nice job. All right. So, anyway, uh, okay, I would love to get to all these comments, and maybe we will be able to uh, get to them if we're, if we're copying and pasting them. Maybe we'll look at them uh, at 6 o'clock Eastern time. We do have to move on because we do have uh, NHL coming up. All right. So, we've got a bunch of plays here in NBA, and now we'll move on to an NHL. Okay, Jim? Yep. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.